evening and bless everyone out there. I pray you're having a blessed, wonderful evening. And I want to speak on the enemy, Satan. I want to speak on how subtle he is and the false prophets that are out here, not talking about them, but the deceptions that are out here, how subtle this issue is, how he works, and how there's a lot of people who are who are deceived about how how the, how he works and how this is going on. Now, of course, the world is deceived. As Second Corinthians four four states that the God of this world, which is Satan, he's blinded the minds of those who believe not. But there are a lot of professed Christians who fall into that category because they don't have the true gospel due to heresies, um, not knowing who God is and teaching false doctrines and such. And that's why Paul had had wrote in the prior verse that if the gospel is hid, it's hid to them who are lost. So it's not just the world alone and those who deny Christ, but a lot of people who do profess Christ, but in the gospel. And uh, Paul also wrote in Galatians uh, chapter 1 that anybody who teaches another gospel, you know, let him be accursed. But I'm going to run through a few verses and and speak on this issue of how the enemy works a bit and how how very deceptive he is, and this is not overcrediting him or glorifying him or taking the focus off of Christ. This is written in the Word. We know where to know these things and and to know our adversary. The Apostle Paul also wrote that we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Okay, well that means we're not to be ignorant of his devices. And Paul, he was educated on how the enemy works, so he could claim that and we should be able to do the same too, understanding how he works and who he is. And the name Satan, it means the accuser, and that's that's what he does. He, he seeks to accuse us and to deceive us. He's the father of lies, and the truth isn't in him at all. He's credited as the god of this world, and that's, that is since the fall of Adam, when Adam, who was the ruler of the world, you know, ordained by God, he um, transferred his power over to Satan, and sin and death came into the world from disobedience by eating of the forbidden fruit. But we're going to jump into this, and I'm going to start in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, which reads, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. What I want to point out from this verse is key words, many and antichrist. That word antichrist is plural. So we're not just looking for the antichrist, one man, but antichrist. And this is in John's time. He said they're already here, and many of them. So what we must know is that Antichrist are those who oppose Christ, and it's not just people who deny Christ through profession, but they are people who claim to be of Christ, but they're not of him. They profess Christ, but they don't live for him. They don't teach sound doctrine and such, so they look like they are of him, and they they appear in the church just as, as it, just as it says goes on to say in the following verses they they were with with us but they didn't remain with us because if they were of us then they would have remained so they're in the church and they're antichrist and they're deceiving people and you go over to um, Second John chapter one verse seven says, for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess that not who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Okay, so again we get a definition of an antichrist and again I want to point out many, many deceivers. That key word many it states that there's a lot. There's a lot of them. And deceivers, that's what they do, deceive. There's a reason why they are called false prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing, and that we are to test the spirit because it is not based upon the profession of, of one's faith. Jesus says in Matthew 7, not everyone says, Lord, Lord, 
to enter to the kingdom of heaven. If it were that simple as far as, you know, that we know someone saved because they say Jesus is Lord, the Bible wouldn't keep warning us over and over and to test the spirit and know them by their fruit. You know, it never says know them by their confession. And I'm going to go over to 1 John chapter 4. Verse 1 states, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. In other words, for try is test, test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So again, this is with the help of the Word and the Holy Spirit. We align everything with the Word, which is the standard of truth, and the Holy Spirit guides us in all, into all truth. And you can test the spirits of people. Again, it's not just, oh, he said Jesus, so he's saved. He was in church last week. He's saved. He does nice, good things and is a preacher, women as well. But that's why it says to test the spirits. And a lot of people, they're on this don't judge thing, and which is not biblical in the context they use it because we're to judge righteously. And there's people to hang out with and people not to hang out with. And just alone being aware of false prophets. To know them by their fruit, that's judgment and discernment. And what a lot of people do, while they're saying don't judge, they're judging the flesh because they said he's of Christ because he has a Bible at home and wears a, a cross uh, as a, um, a chain. Oh, he, he must be saved. He did a song about God, so he's saved. That's judging the flesh. And the Bible says test the spirit. The Bible also says that a carnal mind is enmity against God and is death. Because if you're looking at that, you're not going to see the wolf in sheep clothing. You're looking, you're going to see the sheep. And the Bible says, test the spirits. And this is how they deceive. Well, let's go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And this is a passage of verses that I believe that really just get missed out on. Um, people may have heard it, but don't really understand the context. I mean, we already hear that Satan's a liar and a deceiver, a cheater, and that he, um, you know, the truth is not in him. We hear those things, and he's evil and all that, but I don't think people um, really get how big it is, and I didn't really understand until about a couple of years ago, you know, this issue of how evil the world really is. This is why God is saying not to be of the world many false prophets, many antichrists, not a few. You know, the the church is outnumbered as far as numbers. You know, we're in the world. So you take people who don't want Christ and then take the people who claim Christ and not really of them. You know, it's it's biblical that it's more people who are, who are going to hell than, than heaven. You know, that path to heaven, as Jesus said, is broad and narrow, and few find it. And... And so when you add those numbers up, you know, you know, it's without number to numbers, but our strength isn't in numbers, it's in God. But um two second Corinthians um eleven and uh, starting in verse thirteen, it reads For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose ends shall be according to their works. Again, we have false apostles, deceitful workers. See, these are positions that are anointed by God for, for particular um, ministry. God anoints people as apostles and prophets and things. So these are people of the enemy that are transforming themselves into apostles and prophets. They're in the church, and they're deceiving. So what the Apostle Paul is writing here is that, you know, Satan being the deceiver that he is, he is able to transform himself into a, the light of an angel. And no marvel means no surprise. No wonder it's not as a big surprised that his people are going to do the same thing. You know, the Bible warns of people having a form of godliness but denying the power. And again, that's the whole issue of wolves dressing in sheep clothing. 
because they they look like the real deal. They look like they're of Christ. They talk like they're of Christ, many of them. Some of them don't hide the disguise, and people still don't believe the word. So, you know, you may deal with someone like, you know, Lil Wayne or what have you, you know, and they show all the fruit of not being saved, but because they say God or, you know, Jesus in a song or in an interview or because they don't know the Bible or believe it, it's, well, we, we can't know. Only God can judge that. And the Bible tells you that you can and are to know that if someone belongs to God, including yourself. You know, it's not just the profession of faith. The profession, if it's genuine, it's going to produce fruit. And that's why the Bible tells us to examine ourselves and test the spirits of others. See if this is genuine. If they definitely are saying that Christ isn't the Son of God, that's, you know, hoopla and all that, then you know that they are anti-Christ. But there are people who claim to be saved, they claim to be of Christ, they're in the church. This is when you test the spirits. So, again, it's no wonder that that these people, you know, they're in the pulpits, preachers and prophets and um, people who go to church, the congregation, they are, a lot of them are anti-Christ. Some are honestly deceived. A lot of cult leaders are de are deceived. Um, so I'm not talking about sincerity, if they're sincere or not. There are people who definitely just change the Bible around, but there's also people who are ignorant and honestly deceived, and they're teaching false doctrines, like denying the Trinity, and they believe the Bible says that Jesus isn't God. And they're in the church, you know, believing that the Holy Spirit isn't God, isn't a being, isn't it. But it rains on the just and the unjust, and these are damnable heresies, and these are anti-Christ doctrines. And while it rains on the just and the unjust, you know, you're thanking God for being there and, and Christ, and it's not him because you can't deny who God is and, and be saying, you know, this is the Holy Spirit, and, you know, and the cult is calling him an it and Jesus less than God. And these are damnable heresies that do lead to hell. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul lists um, the, the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. And one of the works of the flesh listed is heresies. And so not only what we believe and how we, you know, in our um, application of the Bible, teaching it, you know, so you're going around teaching that, you know, the Trinity isn't biblical and works righteousness, Jesus isn't the only way. That's a work of the flesh. And blood can be on your hands. It's going to be on that person as well. There's no finger pointing. You know, some are honestly deceived. You know, they may have went to the job of witnesses when they want to learn about Christ and, and things like that. But if you're of God, he's going to lead you to the truth. So it's not going to be any finger pointing because God has preserved his word. His word will not pass away, and the truth is there. And that's why you have to study for yourself or you're going to be deceived. You have to study for yourself and, um, you know, study with the Holy Spirit because, you know, this Bible can be interpreted in different ways and make sense. And, you know, I know for myself from being in a cult, and it's amazing to, you know, hear about how Satan being a liar and things like that and hear about, like, other cults, but not even know that you're in one yourself. So that's how subtle it is, so... I'm going to start another video, and we're going to move over to Matthew 7, so I'll be right back with y'all.